Hi, everybody. It's Reverend Therese Lee. And this is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. And let's take a moment and close our outer eyes as we do in unity to start our time together in prayer. Living, loving presence, thank you for the awareness of all that is, the awareness of our allness that is each of us present, no matter what time or what day it is that we are together. In unity, one thought, great minds, we are grateful. We pray this in the name and after the nature and under the authority of the living, loving presence that is you and that is me. And so it is. Amen. We are grateful. Please, as you join us, put in the box where you're from. And if you have a prayer intention or you might have um, a prayer request, you would like to be on our e-news, go ahead and let us know. Our email address is unityofhiltonheadoffice at gmail.com. So today is the 25th of September already. And I thought, you know, we've been talking about wisdom. And I think wisdom is part of living a prayer-filled life. And I'd like for us to talk about that today and, and the possibilities that come from being Spirit-led, prayed up, so to speak, is what I like to call it. Each time that we take a moment to get settled in where we are, wherever it is, it could be in traffic, it could be in the um, food line at church or at, um, the, at the grocery store, whatever it is, each time we take a moment we connect ourselves with the divine within us. We unleash the divine potential of being possibilitarians. And that's what you and I are, the very beloved of God. And each time we step away from the busyness of life and all that's outside of us, we draw forth from within us then the very best that is us, showing out as us into the world. When we breathe into the moments, we connect with this innate possibility. We allow then spirit to work in through and as us. And then we get to realize, oh, with a relationship with the God of our understanding, your understanding, my understanding, all the many different understandings. Then what happens is we get to be and see as things really are versus who we are, right? Also, I love, and I don't know who to contribute the um, statement to, that often we create God in our image and actually we are created in God's image and there's a difference. So let's go back to the truth of who we are, born in the image and after the likeness of all that is great and good. God in unity is called the universe, great creator, spirit, you might, whatever it is, it's all right. Your definition of God is welcome here. We know, I think we will agree, that it is the innate life source that runs in through and as each of us, engaging the divine ideas that we come into this world downloaded with, right? And then we get to be in perfect synchronicity with our God mind. And that's when we've let go all the things that are the busyness of life and who said what to whom and... What channel is this person on versus that? I often invite us to turn off our TVs and to stay present to the truth of who each of us is. And then what happens? Peace, love, and harmony. Would it be all right to have more of that in your life? I think so. 
So there's a poem. It's called Into the Day. It's actually a prayer. I got up early one morning and rushed into the day. I had so much to accomplish. I had no time to pray. Troubles just tumbled about me and heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me, I wondered. And God replied, you didn't ask. I tried to come into God's presence. I used my keys at the lock. God gently and lovingly chided me. Why, child, you didn't knock. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the day toiled on gray and bleak. I called on the Lord for the reason, and God said, you didn't seek. I woke up early this morning and paused before entering the day. I had so much to accomplish. I had to make time to pray. Author is unknown. If you're taking notes, that's a note to take. Before your your feet hit the ground, take time to pray to get yourself filled up with all of the possibilities that exist because of who you and I are. It's fabulous. I love that uh, phrase, stay prayed up. We always work with our prayer chaplains that way. And I think it serves us all. Due to the many circumstances outside of us, when we're prayed up, then we tend to wobble like weebles, but we don't fall down. Whether it's news or a situation, a relationship, we can wobble, but we don't have to fall down. We can respond versus react. Imagine. And of course, I'm here to ask the favorite question. Are you willing? Are you willing? So in our life, the greatest connection is prayer, right? Practicing the presence, accessing the perfection of God in, through, and as us that shows up in our humanity as progress, possibilities. This is the connection. When we take time apart and we move from the head to the heart space, right? As heart math tells us, and breathe through the heart. Then what happens is our humanity is kind of pushed aside, right? And out comes the divinity yet again. It's always a both and. Human and divine all the time. One, you and I, me and you, one. And what gets in the way of all of this is the human mind and the monkey mind, so to speak, we call it, or the ego mind. And when we get back into getting centered into our heart space, so to speak, we are able then to call on being prayed up. And that releases these energies that allows us then to live in the power that we talked about these last couple of weeks. Passion and purpose and oneness, the holy wholeness, embracing the evolution of our consciousness as we hit the road with feet on our faith. Are you willing? Are you willing? So there's a story about a man who went to pick up his automobile, his car, at the car dealership, and they wanted him to test the engine while he was there because they wanted to impress the buyer, the dealership did, with the power of the engine in this new car. So they said, put it in park and then rev up the engine to 5,000 RPMs. That's pretty high. So the car's in park, he revs up the engines, the car shakes and quivers and He thought to himself, the story goes, wow, this is like me often. My potential 
is highest in park. Right? So we're able to sit in the moment of stillness, like a parked car is, and rev up the engine of our knowing, of our embracing our wholeness and our divinity. And then we get to step out. So just like when a car is put into drive, it's going to move forward. Well, we stay prayed up. We get ourselves, our souls and our bodies revved up. And then we're able to go forward as well out into the day. Forward movement. Letting go all the things that don't serve us. Right? So... Prayer engages the Christ-like nature of us, which is innate. And we believe without the doubts that sometimes cloud our mind when we're not prayed up. And then we go out into the day and be all that we've come here to be and on purpose. Are you willing? Are you willing? Each time you and I make a moment to feed our souls, right? So this past week, I was with the Unity Ministers of the Mid-Atlantic States called UMAS, and I fed my soul. Music, workshops, meeting people, seeing people, being prayed up, taking time apart. How often do you do that? Take time to feed your soul. I'm not sure. Because it's different when we go to feed our bodies, right? We go to a restaurant, we order food, and we eat it, and then we're all filled up. And this place we were at, Lake Janaluska, had fabulous food. So what do we do to feed our souls? How are you doing that? Because what we know is feeding our soul comes from time with God. Time set apart. Could be a walk, could be time at the gym, could be quiet, could be in a nap, could be watching Therese. I'm not sure. You'll know what works for you that regenerates you and sets you up for yet again to be all that you've come here to be out in the world. We know sometimes when we don't do this, then we feel a starving, so to speak, within our soul. It might show up as agitation. It might show up as uneasiness. It might show up as negative self-talk. I'm not sure. And it's your soul saying, hey, hey, would you spend time feeding me? Will you fill me up yet again? And then what happens? We have poise and peacefulness, well-being in our consciousness, and a living from this power we've been talking about that's filled with wisdom as we go forward. And allow then God and the Spirit to live in through and as us expressing out into the world in the manifestation of you. That's why you're a big deal, because your presence is needed. And most importantly, when you are then the presence of all that is out into the world. Is it easy? I think it's pretty easy. However, It's not always so simple, is it? And so take the time. Use the skills that you have learned through unity, through our time together, through one of the booklets maybe you've read, through one of the retreats you might have attended, to be so that your being blesses the world. You've connected in prayer, You live from this full space. And then what happens is you can see that the time in prayer releases the pressures, reduces the pressures in our life. Everything isn't all that dramatic. 
We go back to being centered in prayer. And then what emanates out from us instead is a peacefulness, right? We respond versus react. Our words and our hearts are open to receive. I love the quote, I'm not sure exactly how, I'd rather have a mind open with wonder than one closed with belief. Something to that effect. And it's true, isn't it? Especially in today's world. Do you use your prayer life to infuse the rest of your life? Do you use your prayer time to be the healing power that emanates out to settle the chaoses. I hope so. I think you'll agree that to have a successful life that's lived as a prayer, which I hope is everybody's intention, let me live as a prayer, right? As the pencil in what we would call God's hand writing the script of prayer as us. That's what Mother Teresa would always say. But it means that there has to be a regularity of prayer time, of connection time, whatever that looks like for you. Because remember, in unity, we're never going to tell you what to think, at least not here at Unity Spiritual Center of Hilton Head. We're going to ask you to think and then rethink what you're thinking and then question what it is yet again. Right. So there's a oh um, story, a, a diagram, a um, lesson, so to speak, that talks about what this might look like. So if we were talking about air instead of prayer, what we know is that air is good, right? Prayer is good. Air is good, right? And take one breath. Is that enough? Because pretty soon we need to take another breath, right? So air makes for successful breathing. Yes? And prayer makes for successful living and breathing too. Right? Establish a regular time every day to go to God, right? To call forth from within a talking time and also establish a time to listen. Ask with your hand on your heart as the Peace Connection teaches us, what do I need to know? As we breathe through our heart space, what do I need to know? And what happens as we continually do this is we become continually refreshed to stay in the moment and to live from this place of peace and poise, no matter what's happening in our life. Mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. These are the intelligence that we live on, right? So um, intellect is IQ, Emotional is EQ and spiritual is SQ. And these are the intelligences that each of us has. And like with anything, they're all at different levels, right? So it's not about comparing, never compare. Always, I always try to admire, right? And if I'm going to be more intelligent, that means I probably am going to read a book differently than I might read one to enhance my emotional or my spiritual intelligence, right? But all three are important, IQ, EQ, SQ. And then, of course, there's PQ, which is physical intelligence. How are you taking care of this body temple? All four are are so necessary in the world. 
to stay connected to prayer, to call forth the possibilities so we can live as possibilitarians. Right? Are you willing? When the shift happens, the holy shift is what Albert Einstein calls it, based on time with God of your understanding, prayer, quiet, whatever all that looks like for you, meditation, the shift will happen inside of you. Other people are going to be so attracted to your light. Of course they will. And then what happens is there's a different kind of a spiritual energy that emanates out from us. And it feels good. People see the difference in you. And others can also feel, and you will feel, the transformation that's happening within. All this is about the inside job. We don't get to make somebody else what's wrong with us. Nope. Let them be them, and you be you, and I'll be me, right? How are you dedicating your life to prayer? It's said that Jesus quoted in scriptures to pray continually. I believe that. I'm saying thank you, God, all the time, or whoa, wow, look at that. Most of my prayers seem to be ones of gratitude, right? And affirmations, of course, as I pray with you all. For me, you know, just staying in a state of constant thank you and I am grateful, then what happens is uh, I see things with different eyes filled with wonder, filled with wonder. And you might ask, you know, Teresa, I've tried that. I've prayed and then I prayed and, you know, do I just keep praying? Well, I'm not sure. You might say, what do I pray about? What words do I use? Again, I'm not the boss of you. However, think about it. When you talk to your friend on the phone, you can talk for hours, can't you? Yeah. So how about talking to God? the same way. And we remember if we forget where God is, we just open our shirt and look down and say, hello, God, right? As close as your heart space is the very spirit is where your divinity lies, right? And so don't worry about the words, just have this conversation. If you have a need, state it. If there's an affirmation, state it, right? So talk to God, to the spirit, to the Holy Spirit of you, which is the whole of spirit as you, as if because it is your best friend. It's a shift in our consciousness from when we were children and we prayed to God. Now we're praying from that place of God residing within us. And every time we pray, it's a new experience, right? Because we keep evolving with each moment. Are you willing? Are you willing to be able to have a conversation and then, uh, you know, um, start feeling and experiencing a new kind of communication, right? Because practice is about progressing. It's, you know, practice makes progress. And it happens as we get more and more use to having these holy conversations. And then it kind of becomes like a voyage of spirit expressing as you. How will that happen? How will you be a prayer into the world? I think a most powerful prayer is one that we do when we're united. So the Bible says that Jesus, when he sent out people, you know, disciples, he usually sent them out in twos, right? And 
there's many reasons as to why, you know, and again, we weren't there. What we understand, the intention was so that in case one of them forgot, the other could remind them of just who they were and bring forth again the reminder of their innate spiritual power. Do you have a friend like that? Do you have a prayer partner? Maybe we'll start that in unity. We'll have people we can pray with at Unity of Hilton Head. I have people from my ministerial class I pray with. I have other friends that I pray with. Sometimes it's spoken words. Sometimes it's a text. Right? So there's not just one way. You'll figure it out. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says, Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. So think about two words, Charles Fillmore said, cobwebs and cables. In your mind's eye, you you can picture the cobweb in a tree or on a plant, maybe in the dark corner of your room. And then take a moment and imagine the steel cables, thick, thick steel cables. It's different, isn't it? The steel cable versus the cobweb. How we approach life and how we make choices to do that, we can do it alone. And then what happens is our happiness might be connected by cobwebs. Or we can choose differently. Because if we're going to choose the cobweb way of being, then what happens is any little offsetting experience can bring tears and shatter joy. As we choose to live from the power of God expressing in and as us and the connection between us, the possibilities that re- that emerge as us, is about living life fortified with the strength of a cable. The cables, think of the cables. I'm reminded of when Jesus was talking to the disciples and they were arguing among them, you can remember, like, who's going to be in charge when Jesus leaves? Who's going to be, you know, the the top dog? And Jesus uh, is the stories tell us, watched from a side, these opinionated conversations, but he said nothing. He was quiet. And instead, he went and he got a bowl of water and he stooped down in front of the apostles who were sitting there and he began to wash their feet. And Peter, the story tells us, protested and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord, you can't wash my feet. I should wash yours. Now we know that should is a smelly word, right? We don't want to be shooting on ourselves. Jesus, the story says, brushed Peter aside and continued washing all of the feet of his disciples. Everybody breathing? He wanted to teach them that if they wanted to actually lead, they had to lead by example. You hear me say all the time, I don't have answers for you because I have to go within to get the answers for me. I say to you, I'm not the boss of you. I'm not. That's between you and God, right? We know where to go to get the answers, don't we? Whether it's within, call a coach or a friend, another minister, go to one of the books that we have, and then sit with the discernment process. Take it to prayer. We each have so many God-given gifts, 
right? We come in loaded with them. And one of those gifts is the gift of connection through prayer time. After we settle ourselves down. I don't believe there's any higher gift in the world for ourselves than prayer. Time that you allow, that you set aside, that you make time for to be with the God of your own understanding. The greatest among you will be your servant. That is also scripture in Matthew 23, 11. Are you willing? In unity, we follow the great example, and that's Jesus, the way he lived. Not the great, he was not the great exception, right? We use his teachings as a roadmap to help us get to where it is we can do and be the best that we have come here to be and do. So three things to wrap this up. First, if you came to me and we were having a connection, I'd listen to you. And I would believe in you. Sometimes I find that I believe in you more than you believe in you. And you have done the same for me. I'm grateful. And the third is I will go to God and pray with you. Right? And know that all doubts are put aside. And depending upon what your prayer request is, your prayer attention, we know that divine order happens. Perfection and wholeness is your divine nature. This is about being Christ-like. Unity friend, longtime friend, Ella Wheeler Wilcox said this, there are only two kinds of people on earth today. Two kinds of people, no more, I say. Not the rich and the poor, for to know a man's wealth, you must first know the state of his consciousness and health. Not the happy and sad, for in life's passing years, each has his laughter, each has their tears. No, Ella says the two kinds of people on earth I mean are the people who lift and the people who lean. In which class are you? Are you lifting the load of some overtaxed lifter who's going down the road? Or are you a leaner who lets others share your portion of toil and labor and care? Ellis says, we are the lifters here in unity. We are the lifters of all humankind. This is our mission. And Unity of Hilton Head's mission is to deepen our connection with God, self, and each other. So close your outer eyes and let's take a moment together. Breathe and move from your head to your heart space. And it's our Unity co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, who showed us with her life how to establish in our spiritual consciousness a spiritual center that we might become associated with, regardless of our geographical location. This is our prayer center. And from this state of consciousness of Myrtle, silent unity was birthed. Everybody breathe again. Prayer as the connection to the presence of God right here and right now. seen in ourselves and in all we meet today, the Holy of Spirit expressing, embracing the divine nature in us all. So 
So breathe again and take a moment in the silence. As we bring our attention back to our time and our space together, we say thank you, living, loving presence, for these unity teachings, for our time together. Thank you for being with us whatever time it is, whatever day it is that you're with us. And as you're so moved, we graciously receive your practice of generosity. Snail mail address is P.O. Box 1392, Bluffton, South Carolina. 29910. And on our website, we have a PayPal button that says practice generosity, and you get to use your credit card or your PayPal account, www.unityofhiltonhead.org. Thank you. We are grateful. We'll see you here next week. And in the meantime, if you would like our e-news or have a prayer, let us hear from you in the box. Reverend Therese signing off, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Many blessings. Namaste.